There are four main types of data, nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. In this quick video, I'm going to define each of these and give some memorable examples so that you remember what these are. We start first with nominal data. This is a variable that has attributes that are meant to be mutually exclusive and exhaustive. It's usually a category. So the examples, I have a little asterisk here because there's um, some controversy with all of these. There's some limitations and issues, but they are meant to be mutually exclusive, meaning you can only pick one answer, and exhaustive, meaning all of the possible choices are listed. So the way that this is often described as things like gender, eye color, hair color, you know, when you get your driver's license and it asks you to check the box of what eye color you have or what hair color you have, it can be a little hard, right? Oh, is my hair light brown, dark blonde? I, I don't know what to say. Are my eyes green or hazel or what? I don't know what to say. And of course, you know, there's there can be fluidity in gender. There can, many people are multiracial or don't necessarily fall into one category of organized religion. So certainly critiques with this but I'm just the messenger here that this is what nominal data is supposed to be. Now, my memory trick here to remember this is that when I see nominal, I think nom, 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 like a little, you know, meme or something, people eating. And so nom, 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 you eat food. And so think about there being a questionnaire that asks you what your favorite type of food is. And there's a checklist of Indian, Italian, Chinese, Mexican, American food. And so that's nominal data because you would be selecting one category and that's how the data would be shown of which category you picked, or you identified with. Next we have ordinal data. These are things that are rank ordered, ordinal order, but it can be hard to sometimes quantify exactly perfect and consistent distance between the different ranks. So a classic example here is a Likert scale. You know, those surveys after you complete a training or something and it's, you know, strongly disagree to strongly agree with certain things, that would be ordinal data. Or even shirt sizes. You know, in some cases, the difference between a small and medium and medium and large might not be exactly the same, but they're kind of ordered in terms of the sizes. The way I remember this is I think of the O in ordinal as looking kind of like a, a gold medal um, or like the rings for the Olympics. And first, second, third place would be an example of ordinal data. So ordinal order, think of the O and the you know gold medal or the Olympic rings as first, second, third place. Then we go to interval data. And as we move forward, each of these has some of the characteristics of the preceding ones, but there's a differentiation. So with interval data, it's kind of like ordinal in the sense that there is a, a ranking, but there is very equal distance between each level or each data point. And the other key feature is that there is no absolute zero. So what that means is the very common example you see here is temperature. If you are looking at temperature data, and you see, you know, one day it was 20 degrees Celsius and the next day it was zero degrees Celsius. It doesn't mean that on the first day there was a temperature, on the second day there was no temperature, right? It's, you know, zero doesn't mean an absence of temperature in this case. My memory trick here is I think of interval, I think of it's freezing in here, it's freezing in here, in the interval, because zero means that it's cold, it doesn't mean that there is an absence or a lack of something. Which contrasts to ratio data, which are your classic most numbers, and there is a true zero. So this could be income, because if you make zero dollars, that literally means you're not making any money, that's significant. Or if you've never, if you've had zero years service in the military, that means something. But there can also be numbers associated with that. Age, there is such a thing as being a newborn, right? No, you know, you haven't had your first birthday yet. So my memory trick here is ratio, the root rat, and someone asking, how many rats, how many pet rats do you own? And you could say one, two, five. 
Or you could say zero, and if you say that you have zero rats, that literally means you have zero rats. There's a meaning to that zero, meaning that there's an absence of or none. Hope you found this to be a help helpful overview, and good luck on your studying.